Why is Roman Reigns hated by many WWE fans? This is a question that a lot of people will have an answer for. Uh, is it, you know, they say they'll say that they don't like his promo skills, his interview skills, his talking skills. They don't like his wrestling ability. They don't like his look. They don't like, there's a million reasons why people will say they don't like him. He's just, or, or the biggest one obviously is he's just not ready for prime time. He is not ready for the big stage of WrestleMania, which is coming up in a couple weeks. Now, I myself uh, don't hate Roman Reigns, but I can't say that I really like Roman Reigns. I feel more indifferent right now. I definitely am not a fan of his talking skills. I'm not a fan of that. I don't hate his talking skills. Um, I've seen him cut uh, a few, well, more the sit-down interviews he's done haven't been that bad. Um... Like the one he did on Raw about a month ago after the snowstorm. He did one on Smash a couple weeks ago. It wasn't great. His, his, even the interviews, even the, even the, the sit-down interviews haven't been great. But they were better. But here's the thing. Most of the time, he's going to be going out there in the middle of the ring and talking in front of thousands of people. And he's not very good at it right now. Will he get, be will he get better? I don't know. One of the things, one of his issues is that he has a very monotone voice. It's not very exciting sounding. You know, it's just not, it doesn't exude excitement when you hear him speak. Well, then you'll have people say, well, hey, you know, what about The Undertaker? Undertaker wasn't a great talker. He, up until, you know, I would say the late 90s, he talked, but it was not all the time. It was when he needed to speak, maybe... You're building up a match. You know, it wasn't all the time. He would speak, but he had Paul Bear. He had Brother Love. He had Ted DiBiase. He had all these other people who would speak for him. So he wouldn't talk all the time. It was more occasionally he would speak. Then around 98, 99, 2000, and later on when he became the more the, when he had the biker gimmick, he spoke a lot, and he wasn't the worst talker I've ever seen. The worst promo guy I've ever seen. But he definitely wasn't great. He wasn't really say he was good. He was above average, I guess you could say. But he was the Undertaker, you know. He, uh, you know, he has this larger than life gimmick, you know, um, when he was the Dead Man originally. But then later on, when he was the Biker gimmick, he wasn't as over. So that's debatable. So you, you, some people will probably say he was just as over as the bite with the Biker gimmick, or maybe more. He still got great reactions, but he was definitely more over as the Dead Man. But um, that's probably the person people, I hear people compare him to the most when it comes to his promo skills because, you know, he's a tall guy, he has long hair, he's supposed to be kind of a, a, a badass, and similar, kind of similar to The Undertaker, um, but he just, The Undertaker did not have, he wasn't that monotone as the Roman Reigns is. He, you know, Roman Reigns is a cousin of The Rock, and um, The Rock is very, very charismatic, obviously. And I think WWE wants him to be like The Rock. That's why not too long ago, they had him cut a promo where he did, like, nursery rhymes. He did this for a couple of weeks in a row, where he would talk do nursery rhymes. These were, uh, it was reported later on that these on the internet, that these these promos were written by Vince McMahon. Um, and a lot of people were uh, really hated these promos. And um, I was not a fan of them either. I thought they were terrible promos. They were definitely his worst. Those were definitely his... Uh, if you look back at all the promos he's ever cut, those are the worst ones. The Nursery Rhyme promos, Jack and the Be Beanstalk uh, promo he did. Those were terrible. But uh, that was kind of the beginning of the... The downward slide of Roman Reigns, really, when he when he cut those promos, um, he won the Royal Rumble. That really angered a lot of people. I was not shocked. I I mean, a lot of people, these people in the audience in Philadelphia, were so upset, and people obviously on the internet as well. People, a lot of fans were very very upset about this. I was not upset about it because I was not 
shocked in the least. And because I've been a fan for so long, I, these things don't really upset me that much anymore. I don't get upset by a lot. Um, the things that really upset me more is just putting on a boring show where there's nothing happening, where it feels like an episode of, you know, Sunday Night Heat from like 2005 or something, you know. That, to me, is where I really get upset, when they just are lazy. Now, if you want to push this guy, push that guy, you know, sure, some wrestlers, maybe there's a guy who you don't like his wrestling style, you don't like his personality. For personal reasons, maybe you don't like someone. Look, there are certain wrestlers I just don't like. Um, I'm not gonna, there's, there's a big list of ones I don't like, but, um, you know... I'm not going to quit watching the show just because there's a couple wrestlers I don't like, you know. Um, but the thing with the thing with Reigns is, um, or, okay, so let's go back to the to Royal Rumble. So people went crazy after that, went crazy, went nuts, you know. People going out on the internet and using, you know, saying they're going to cancel the WWE Network and ended up not really being the case. A lot of people actually are buying the WWE Network uh, for the Royal Rumble. Um, and so then the crowd reactions began. It started at Royal Rumble. It's been up and down. Some pe- some crowds, mostly SmackDown crowds, and the live event crowds, the house shows, those crowds for the most part have cheered Roman Reigns for the most part. There'll be some still some boos on those shows, but for the most part... He gets cheered, not to an unbelievable level, not like he's the rock in his prime or Steve Austin or anything like that, you know, um, or even the rock today. I mean, rock today would get, ten, you know, gets 10 times the reaction of Roman Reigns uh, if, you can't, if he would come out right now, if he would show up on Raw today. But, you know, Roman Reigns right now, he is not getting a good, consistent reaction, especially on Raw. On Raw, he gets the most booze. That's where most of the hardcore fans, internet wrestling fans, smart marks, whatever you want to call them, those are the, those are you know a good portion of the Raw crowds most of the time, especially in their, if they're in a uh, closer to a big big city or a, a more of a wrestling type city like New Jersey, New York area. Um, you know that is where uh, you're going to have most of your smart fans. And those are the fans that mostly, for the most part, don't like Roman Reigns. But also, I think there's a lot of casual fans, especially kids right now. Kids really don't seem to care too much about Roman Reigns right now. The, uh, a lot of women like Roman Reigns, but kids don't seem to care too much about Roman Reigns. They, they, they probably like him, I guess, but they don't like him so much that they want to buy his merchandise. They want to cheer him constantly like they do with John Cena. They still, he, he still hasn't won over the kids the kid fan base as much as, you know, as John Cena has. So, um, so then it comes down to what else, what else is there something about Roman Reigns that people don't like? His wrestling ability. He is not very good in the ring uh, compared to other wrestlers. If you compare him to like, you know, a horrible, terrible wrestler like Great Khali, of course, it's a terrible example, but he's one of the worst wrestlers. It's not his fault. He's very, he's just not built to be a good, built to even wrestle, really. He's very tall and very uh, uncoordinated. But, um, it's just, he, Roman Reigns, he just doesn't, have, right now, his, his in-ring ability, when it comes to singles matches, tag team matches, he's fine. Because he just, he, he, he's, he sits on the apron, he waits for the tag, he makes the comeback. And that's really what I've realized is that the only time he's really over with the crowd, really, is when he does his comeback. With the Superman punch, the spear, it's the only time the crowd really gets into him, ever. They don't really cheer him that much when he comes out, uh, when, he, when, he enters the, when he enters the arena. He has a good entrance, coming through the crowd, that's good, but he doesn't get this big reaction. The only time he gets, get a, big, gets a big reaction is when he does his comeback. It's the only time he gets a big reaction, you know. Um, people get into that most of the time. Even this past Monday's Raw in New Jersey, people really got into it at the end. They hated him for the most part on the show. There were a few, you know, you hear, you could hear, you know, maybe some, a little bit of cheering occasionally, but for the night, I'd say 90% of the crowd hated Roman Reigns. But, um, now those are the reasons why people say, oh, I don't like Roman Reigns, I hate Roman Reigns, 
you know, I want, and then they say, oh, you know, I want Daniel Bryan to be the top guy. I want, you know, because uh, yeah, all of this is leading to is Roman Reigns winning the title at WrestleMania, becoming the top guy in the company, replacing John Cena. Because they've been doing this storyline recently where, you know, John Cena is, you know, being talked down to by Stephanie McMahon and, you know, he's being, you know, being looked at as he is, he's past his prime. He's 37 years old. He's past his prime. That's what they're saying on TV. And, it, you know, it looks like, <clears throat> it, it looks like uh, Reigns is going to be the next top guy in the company and Cena is going to be put out to pasture at some point in the next year or two. I don't know if he's leaving. I don't know if that's one of the reasons why they're doing this. Who knows? Um, but Reigns right now is being, being groomed to be the top guy in the company, the main event guy, the next John Cena. He's gonna, you know, he's gonna be pushed out. He's gonna, they're gonna make tons of merchandise for him. They want kids, kids uh, to you know to buy the merchandise and everything. Um, is it the question? Is is it gonna be like? Diesel, Kevin Nash, where they they put the title on him for like a year, and they just you know then that you know he the, he they took the title off of him and he wasn't a top guy anymore. You know he went to WCW a few months later, not not too soon after that. Who knows what would have happened if he would have stayed in WWE? We never knew, we never found out. But it looks like uh, that Kevin Nash was not going to be pushed as a top tier guy. He he would have been probably put into main events as a challenger. I don't think he would have held the title really, the, uh, you know, at all really anymore at any point in WWE. Um, but will it be like a Diesel situation? Will it be, or will he just be pushed and pushed and pushed, you know, where until people just finally just say, okay, we give. He's a top guy. We're gonna buy his merchandise. Who knows? But. You know, there are so many other guys right out there right now who people will say, you know, Daniel Bryan, Dolph Ziggler, Dean Ambrose. There's others, you know, NXT, in NXT they're saying, you know, Finn, Finn Balor or Sami Zayn. You know, these guys don't fit the Vince McMahon mold. That's what people have to remember. Vince McMahon mold, number one, he has to be very tall. Roman Reigns is like six foot three. Um... He also has an athletic background, which Vince McMahon likes. Because um, you look at, you know, um, Cena played football. He was a bodybuilder. You know, uh, 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 Steve Austin also played football, college football. Um, the Rock, obviously, he played for the Miami Hurricanes. He was, uh, he played football as well. His dad was a wrestler. So, uh, you know, and also, you know, Roman Reigns. Also, his uh, dad was, uh, I think it was Offa, or I think it was Sika. Alpha or Sika from the um, Wild Samoans. He has family, you know. He has the heritage. The, he's, uh, you know, he's just the Samoan heritage he has. You know, he, you know, this is he fit, and he also has, you know, the he's muscular. And he has fits the Vince McMahon look. You know, uh, he just he fits everything that Vince McMahon wants, and these other guys. Don't fit that. These other these other guys like Ambrose and R Ziggler and um, you know Ziggler is only like six foot tall and Amb Ambrose is about the same height as Reigns about, but he doesn't look like he doesn't look like Roman Reigns and Ziggler you know and Daniel Bryan's only like five foot eight um, and so what I'm saying is is that. None of those guys are ever going to be pushed as the main event guys in WWE unless, like, this man decides to step down, he dies, whatever, you know. Then maybe Triple H will try to push somebody new. You know, I think if it would be anybody, he, he, would, he might push Triple H. If he was in power, it could be Seth Rollins, maybe. Who knows? But... Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens here in the next couple weeks. you got WrestleMania coming up. Is he going to win the title? Obviously. I mean, if he's going to be in the main event, it's going to be, if he, he's going to win the title. No doubt about it. But how long will he hold the title for until Vince McMahon just pulls the plug?